Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new lecture of C Programming. Today, we are learning functions. Yes, this is what makes you different from average students. Now, uh, many people can write code, right? Uh, they can write code in an unstructured, half a set manner or they can write in a structured manner using functions. What are functions? A set of instructions doing a particular task is a function. The advantage of using functions is once you created a function, you can invoke this from anywhere in the program. So for every task that you want to do, if you make it a separate function, your main program becomes so logical, easy to read, easy to modify and very powerful. You realize you're suddenly doing really good programming and powerful programming, but yet you're not finding it any more difficult than what it was earlier. In fact, it starts getting easier and easier as you use more of these functions. Functions have their more power. Uh, they can be, they can accept parameters. I'm going to show you that with examples, of course. I'll show you how to declare functions. Then I'll show you how to declare parameters, how to pass parameters, making functions even more powerful. And then I'll also show you how to get return values from a function. So this is your main program. This is your function. Your main program keeps calling the function, executes it and comes back. Any value sent from your main program to the function is called a parameter, also called arguments. Some people use that word. I don't like that word in general. So I use parameters. It's the same thing, whatever you call. So parameters are value sent from the main program to the function. Function uses the parameters, does calculations, produces a result. It may use the result. It may display the result or it may send the result back to the main program. That's what's called a return value, the reverse of a parameter. Return value is what your function sends back to the main program. So all of this I'm going to show you with examples, not only programming examples, but also I'll explain it to you with real world examples. Because what's the point of learning all this if you don't know where it applies in the real world? Now, function is something you see it all around everything practically we do is done using a function let me give you some examples uh, say from your phone you can send an email you can send an email from your email app obviously you can send an email from your photo album app you can just select one photo and share it and you have that email option you can send an email from a whatsapp screenshot you can send an email from your pdf viewer and so on so my question is Think about it, be sensible, ask yourself these questions. When you are using these appliances, ask yourself questions, you'll understand how their programming is done from the background. So my question is, will all of them have an email program? No, the email program is the same. To send to email a file, there's only a certain set of things that you need to do. It doesn't matter whether you're sending it from WhatsApp or whether you're sending it from your PDF viewer or from your image viewer or from XYZ, from your song or whatever you want to email. What you want to email has nothing to do with how an email is sent. So. Sending an email is a standard function. All these programs invoke that function. So what you realize is suddenly you gave all these programs the power to send an email because you created this as a separate function that can be easily invoked from different programs. That's just one example. Taking a screenshot, again, all the same examples. You can take a screenshot from Instagram. You can take a screenshot from WhatsApp chat. You can take a screenshot from anywhere. All of them don't have a screenshot program. There is one screenshot program. All of these applications invoke that program. Suddenly you've given all these applications the power to take a screenshot. Are you understanding? And so on and so forth. I can go on the whole day. I think you get my point. Any standard operation that you want to do from several places in your program or in your whole application or in your device, you make that a function and invoke that from different places. Are you clear? So I just wanted you to first of all know what is a function. Uh, to see a uh, simple, so first of all, the definition, because that's how you work, right? A set of instructions uh, used to perform a certain task in such a way that they can be invoked from several places in the program. You got the point. Say, for example, this is a program in that there is a set of instructions to do what? To do anything. Think about any example you want, maybe to find factorial. What is it? You need a for loop, keep multiplying the number, keep incrementing or decrementing the number. 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 or 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 up to 10. Either way, you get the factor of 10. So suppose it's to do that or to find the max of 3 numbers or so on. So these are the instructions required to do it. Okay. Now, you want to do this task again and again. Wait, hold on. Not again and again over here. If you want to do it again and again over here, you will make a loop. I'm not saying that. You don't want to do it again. And you don't want to keep screenshotting all the time. <laughs> You want to screenshot at different places. You want to send emails from different applications. So I may want to do it here. Then I may want to do it somewhere later here, maybe somewhere later here. At different places in the program, I want to do the exact same set of instructions. One option is you write these instructions over here and wherever you want to do it again, copy, paste it. 
copy paste it what are you doing you just adding lines and lines and lines and lines to your program making a program too big unnecessarily is the same set of instructions why write them again and again instead write them as a separate body as a separate structure called a function this is your introduction to structured programming a the more logical way of writing a program so you made a function doing those set of things wherever you want to do it remember you want to do it here 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 simply call the function how to call the function how to declare the function of course i'm going to teach you all that first i'm just giving you the background call the function so what happens when you call a function your program was executing it will go to the function execute the function do whatever it had to do like take a screenshot send an email or find the highest or find the factorial plug as and come back and we'll continue this is how a function call works and this is the concept of a function is the concept clear let's say you want to use this function or you want to invoke this function you want to call this function from several places in the program no problem call it from wherever you want to as many times as you want call the function will execute come back again a little ahead call the function will again execute it and come back and so on as many places as you want are you clear so is the concept of a function understood now the obvious advantage that you see over here is these set of instructions are written only once and everywhere it's just one line that is used to call the function so suppose these were some 100 instructions and you had to write it at three places that would have been 300 lines of program now it's just 100 lines plus these three lines to call the function so a you understand the program becomes smaller that's called code reusability that's the first advantage of using functions it reduces the size of the code now this is an advantage that everybody knows everybody i mean by now without me telling you you would have figured that out like common sense there is another advantage which very few students realize yes you will realize within a month or two of your professional life once you start your you join a company and you do serious real world programming you understand this advantage like this but at a student level very few people know this when i take interviews or when i'm just asking quizzing students i get really impressed when somebody points out this advantage and so will your interviewer be when you are sitting for an interview you understand this advantage once you understand it you'll always use functions in every program come on look here suppose this is a big financial program okay you need to calculate this what is this simple interest p into n into r upon 100 you need to calculate this at various places let's say 100 different places you're doing a big financial project at 100 different places you need to run this line to calculate simple interest now this is something that can be done in one line in c programming you agree this is actual c programming code p into n into r slash 100 divided by 100 correct so this can be done by one line i need to do this at 100 different places one option i copy and paste this line at all those 100 places which is fine this is what people would have done the other option is what we learned today if you want to do something at different different places the same set of things at different places make a function so that's the other approach let's make a function let's give it a name you can give a function any name you want obviously give names that make sense so since it's finding simple interest you'll call it simple int or simple interest or just simple whatever you want i'll just take an example and in that you will write this line simple interest is p into n into r upon 100 and now instead of writing this line everywhere simply call the function simple so every time you call the function it will go calculate simple interest and come back and so on are you clear now what did i tell you what is the advantage of using functions it reduces the size of the program correct that didn't happen here if you see without using a function I was still writing this statement at hundred places, which means I added hundred lines to my program. Now that I use a function, I am still calling it from hundred places, which still is one line of code from hundred places, which means I have still added hundred lines to my program. Plus, I have added these one, two, three, four lines which define the function. Are you understanding it? So in this case, my function has actually made my program. longer it contradicts the advantage that i told you it's a very rare case but it does we said we use functions to reduce the size of the program here the program has become bigger because of using functions so my question to you is for something which is so small that can be done by just one line 
is it sensible to create a function hmm? absolutely yes this is what i want you to understand yes functions reduce the size of the program but that's not the only advantage they have a much bigger very powerful advantage which is what i'm going to show you suppose you didn't use a function and you wrote this line at 100 places and felt very happy that i didn't declare a function so i saved four lines of the program yeah i'm a good programmer what happens today simple interest is pnr upon 100 tomorrow our honorable finance minister nirmala nirmala sitaraman she decides that india is doing really well which of course it is let's make simple interest in india from today pnr upon 100 plus 100 rupees bonus everybody will be happy except you why because you had not made a function you had copied that line at 100 places and now since this formula has changed you will have to go and find each of those places and make those changes which is going to be so tedious it's not just that Big projects are not written in one program. Big projects are written as projects, which is a set of 100, 200, 300 programs. In every program, you just wrote this line because you thought it's too small. Why make a function? Or if it's just one line, why I make a function? Now, you'll have to go and change. Find from all those files, find all the places where you've written this and go on changing it. And every time you do it, in your mind, you'll keep cursing yourself. Why didn't I create a function? If you made a function, this is all you need to do. Change it here. The change is reflected all throughout. Whoever has called this function has got the updated value. Please tell me, did you understand this? This is that big advantage. This is, uh, these things people don't realize in college level because you don't do that kind of programming. But in the real world, immediately you realize and you tell yourself after today, Whenever I am writing the same set of code again, no matter how small the code is, if I'm writing the same set of code again and again in the program, I'm making a mistake. I should actually make it a function and call it from several places. You will understand the advantage the day you need to change that code. Changing it in the function automatically reflects the change all throughout. Tomorrow, Apple or Samsung or whatever, whichever company's phone you have. Tomorrow they decide that I want to improve the camera app. They make some settings and improve the camera app. All those programs that were invoking this camera will automatically get the updated version of the camera, will automatically get that new feature. If a new protocol is created for emails, for sending emails with some new security or new XYZ, you have all of them had called the email function. Once you make that change in that email function, which of course your operating system manufacturer, Apple or Google, Android, whoever, once they make that change, it is automatically reflected in all the programs and so on. So your programs become easy to change, more flexible. This is such an important thing in programming. Remember, remember these words. You write a program once, but you modify it hundreds of times. Are you listening? An operating system like Windows or iOS or Mac OS or whatever, they were written once, but year after year, month after month, you get updates. The same set of programs are updated. When you join a company for the first three, four years of your uh, programming life or your professional life, you will be doing programming, not all your life, only the first three, four years. Then you become project managers, you become team leaders, you become XYZ analysts, and your position increases where you are the ones who sits and thinks about the software, creates the logic of the software, not does the actual coding. That's going to be done by your juniors. So what I'm trying to tell you is the programs that you write as a junior, as a, when you start your professional life, a few years later, your juniors will be modifying those programs. If you've written your programs the correct way, while they are modifying, they'll all be thinking how good you are. On the other hand, if you wrote your program like a like a novice, like a, an immature person without using the correct protocols or writing programs, making changes becomes so difficult to a program. And that's not what anybody likes because like I said, programs are written once but changed so many times. Anyway, so I hope you understood this big advantage of using functions and I hope it's very clear to you. After this, whenever you write the same code more than once, always make it a function. The advantage will come the moment that code has to be changed. So that was our second advantage, flexibility. Your programs become very easily adaptable to a change. All right.
So now, these were the two advantages of using functions. Makes the program smaller and makes the programs more flexible. Now, what we're going to do is, I'm going to take real programming examples, create functions, show you how to declare them, how to initialize them, how to call them from different places. We'll test run our programs. Then we'll move to the next level. The thing that makes per function so powerful is parameters, also called arguments. I'll show you how to pass parameters, how to declare parameters, what happens if there is a mismatch, etc., etc. Various examples. We play around like we always do. Then the other half, parameters is the values given by the main program to the function. Return values are the results which are given by the function back to the main program. I'll show you how to declare return values, how to use return values, and then we'll sum it all up with a big programming example. All right, that's the scope of the video. Now you want to learn this whole subject watch this whole video come on my website bharatacharyaeducation.com the link is given down below uh, click on the link you'll see all these courses that i teach 8085 8086 8050 and these are microprocessors and microcontrollers you either know them or you will know them in your further years of engineering uh, this course of course is there in the c programming course this lecture so select the course uh, what you get is full uh, lectures but this is the 20th or 21st video of c programming uh, you get uh, topic wise pdfs you'll of course get a certificate and i am available for your doubts that's my whatsapp number monday to friday morning what 7 8 39 i start by 10 it's always i'm always uh, uh, on whatsapp and all the way till 7 7 30 monday to friday weekend generally i avoid but in case somebody says that sir it's really important tomorrow i have an exam of course i'll solve you that to solve that out also also so all of this you get the fees are 1499 indian rupees as soon as you make the payment the course starts enjoy learning become a programmer enjoy programming it's so much fun once you know how to do it all right we go ahead hope to see you there wish you all the best do well